The 11th hole is called High Inn and is a classic par 3. Now it's a classic par 3 in the sense that it's got a very undulating green and two very well positioned bunkers right next to the green. Now the hole itself is 160 yards and is affectionately known by many of our caddies as a very short par 5 because obviously a lot of people tend to struggle on this hole. Now a well flighted iron shot into the middle of the green it's not all over at that point because, again, those undulating slopes really do give you a headache at times. So a little bit of work needed when you get onto the putting surface. Now the hole itself is quite unique in the sense that it's a crossover hole. We have the seventh hole which runs in front of our green. We then have the eighth, the ninth and the tenth which comes back obviously to this tee, the eleventh, the eleventh straight down and the twelfth here. So it's effectively a loop and of course that's what it's known as, the loop. Now the hole itself, I said, is 160 yards and today we've got a sucker pin. We've got the pin directly behind the Strath bunker. Now again, a lot of amateurs will take this pin on, which is absolute madness. You've got to hit it to the big side, the fat side, left of the pin, and again, try and two putt and get onto that 12th hole. So I've taken a seven iron here, uh, which is a perfect distance for me. I'm going to aim about 10 yards left of the pin, just to make sure that I don't mess with that deep Strath bunker. And I'm going to go ahead and try and put a good swing on this. So a nicely hit iron shot there, left of the pin, like I said. I'd be quite happy to two put this and get onto the 12th hole. Now surrounding this green, there's some fantastic features that I want to show you. So let's head down there and have a look at them. Walking onto the 11th green, you can see the Strath bunker here that I mentioned and how that is very much a sucker pin, which influenced me obviously hitting my ball over to the left of that target. Again, don't fall into that trap because that's a really difficult bunker to get into. Put it in the big part of this green and again, take your chances with your putter. Now, an interesting thing here is the green was flattened in this part in recent times because it used to have quite a big hill that many years ago when the greens didn't stimp quite as fast, you could put a pin position. But of course, as the pins or as the greens have got quicker, those pins could not be positioned over there. So we flatten that off and that naturally brings hill bunker into play. So here we are left of the par 3 11th hole and we're in our hill bunker. Now it's probably more famously known as the Bobby Jones bunker. Now it's known as that because Bobby Jones many years ago hit his ball into this bunker and then was unable to get out. He then, as legend has it, took his scorecard out, ripped it up, threw it in the air and walked back to our clubhouse. Now today we're going to give this a try, see if we can get out of this infamous bunker. So to get out uh, and obviously above this sheer lip, I'm going to need to get the ball up quite quickly. So of course by adding more loft to the club face, that's certainly going to help. Now I'm also going to aim my body to the left so I can cut across the shot which also will help lift that ball up a little bit quicker than normal. Now two inches behind the ball and hit it pretty hard is all I'm really thinking about and again it should lift up nice and high and above our lip. So a nice shot there, a little left of the flag but again I'm delighted. Now I'm very fortunate that I've got modern technology which has a lot more loft than I'm sure Bobby Jones had and of course that helped me escape this difficult situation. Thank you.